So the question again was about how to make sure that you don't go through these cycles of extreme motivation and then lesser motivation. A central theme of the neuroscience of motivation is that the neuromodulator dopamine is involved. How do we know that? Well, there are experiments on animals and humans which show that even in the absence of dopamine or in the presence of very low dopamine, I should say, people and animals can still experience pleasure. However, when dopamine levels are too low, people's ability to pursue pleasure or their willingness to pursue pleasure, in particular, their willingness to undergo effort to pursue pleasure or any goal of any kind, not just pleasure, any goal of any kind is strongly regulated by the levels of dopamine. So if dopamine levels are too low, people simply will not put in the effort to obtain or reach a goal. We can really trace that back to a biochemical slash neural circuit statement, which is we really want to control our output of dopamine and the baseline levels of dopamine from which that output is taken. In other words, we wanna think about dopamine as a reservoir or residing in a reservoir. That reservoir can be depleted, so it's exhaustible, it's depletable, but it's renewable as well. And then there are really three ways that you can replenish that reservoir. How do you do that? Well, first of all, quality sleep, Sleep is really when you replenish that reservoir of dopamine. So you cannot ignore sleep. I'll come back to this in a moment. The second science supported tool that's really been shown to replenish dopamine, in particular, dopamine within the pathways that regulate motivation is a practice I've talked about before on the podcast called non-sleep deep rest, sometimes called yoga nidra, although yoga nidra is a little bit different. The NSDR restores energy through the dopamine system and newer data are starting to show that it can actually recover lost sleep. So if you're not sleeping enough, this is why I'm such a fan of using NSDR, AKA Yoga Nidra, at least once a day. And especially under times when you're engaging in a lot of high output. And when I say, especially at times when you're engaging in a lot of high output, this is a mistake many people make. They push, 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 push. They're in pursuit of a goal. Then they hit that point where they're exhausted. Then they start doing all the dopamine reserve pool replenishing tools such as yoga nidra or nsdr the real key is to always tap off that or refill that reservoir once a day before it's completely depleted so this is a really powerful zero cost tool for re-upping or replenishing that dopamine reserve the third tool that really can allow you to keep the dopamine aka motivation circuitry tuned up properly is to really start paying attention to peaks in dopamine and be very careful about layering in too many things that can stimulate the dopamine systems. For instance, caffeine will increase dopamine receptors that will allow whatever dopamine is available to be more potent. Okay, so caffeine's great for some people, less good for people with anxiety, don't drink it too late in the day because it'll interfere with your sleep and so on and so forth. But many people will combine caffeine with music that they particularly like. Music's great, music can stimulate dopamine release, we know this, but what will happen is people will start consuming caffeine at higher and higher levels, and they'll start layering it in or stacking very potent music, potent for them, plus things like L-tyrosine. Sometimes they'll start taking mucunipurine, sometimes they'll start relying on things like Adderall, Ritalin, and pretty soon what's happening is they're getting these big waves in that dopamine wave pool, big peaks. What happens is after those big peaks in dopamine, the reservoir, the baseline in dopamine drops below its initial level. So it's as if the reservoir got deeper and it's emptier and it takes much, much longer to fill.